was a map infection, they should more have more of them in there. Well, it certainly happens in cows. This is what we can see from work with uh, that was published this year. Nice. I expect we'd be a bit more in our in our meetings this week. Three times more in a cow. They have a nod mutation. In humans, as the nod mutations increase, the probability of getting Crohn's disease increases. Here's some work from Jeremy Sanderson from London looking at Crohn's patients. If, as the number of nod mutations increase, the number of granulomas in, him, in his patients associated with mycobacteria increases. You then say the number of nod mutations increase. Here we have samples of blood samples, gut biopsy samples. The actual probability that you can detect mapping these samples increases. It's quite certain. Nod 2 mutations will correlate with MAP infection in our Crohn's patients. But this isn't all the story. The reason why it's not all the story is because Nod mutations aren't exclusively restricted to Crohn's disease. And they're not all the Crohn's disease have mutations. So the genetics don't tell the whole story. And we have to look at where we can put MAP into the other genetic stories. So let's look at the ATC16 gene. What would this expect to do if I knocked it out? If I not add this, you would expect to get less innate signaling, less apoptosis going on. We know for a fact if we put BCG into this particular system and they're not tagged, you get more persistent. But you could expect if you put MAP into this system, you would get less innate signal. You would get less innate recognition. Can we show that? Have we seen that that actually occurs? Is there a correlation of defective MAP-specific innate responses? So, we now look at some of Ramon Justi's uh, uh, work that's been done recently. Here they show exactly that. Here we see normals reacting to MAP specifically, producing the interferon gamma. Perfectly normal, nice and nice and high. Very good. Normals are demonstrating a healthy response. Our RBD patients, nothing. Something is turning off this response to paratuberculosis. If we increase that in response through vaccination, we should get over it and we should actually make normal. So vaccination may still actually work in our Crohn's patients. Okay, so now we get to the last bit. This is the tricky bit. This is the bit that actually I think proves it. Here we have lots and lots of bugs. We can show it's in here, but we need to get from here to here. We need to show that TH17 is being induced. Now we know mycobacterial infection of uh, other organisms will actually induce all the nice cytokines that are possible. But what we really want is MAP-specific responses. So now we move to a, a, a talk that hopefully is going to be going on a bit later on from Ingrid and Ingrid Olsen's group, and I urge you to go and see it because I think this is a very important piece of work. This actually is taking paratuberculosis and making reactive T-cell populations and looking between Crohn's patients and normals, and they can get reactive T-cell populations from Crohn's patients, active Crohn's patients, but not normal and not inactive Crohn's patients. What are these phenotypes of these organisms, of these, um, these uh, T cell clones? And they are exactly what we want. They are IL-17 positive, they are interferon gamma positive, they are IL-17, they are TH17 cells specific for mycobacterial antigens. This is the link we are looking for. This is the link that finishes our course we have good reservoirs, good transmission, active invasion, good persistence that's pushed by genetic susceptibility. This susceptibility pushes pathogenicity that increases the, that decreases the immune systems to actually produce a specific immune dysregulation that we can push the tissue damage and could, could go on to cause Crohn's disease. But does it fit into the arguments? A couple of years ago, American Society of Microbiology met, all the experts met, and came to the conclusion there were about seven good reasons why MAC causes Crohn's disease. There were also five reasons why it didn't. Now, I've covered the first seven here this evening, and I also think I've covered the first four of the reasons why they shouldn't. JD and Crohn's disease are similar, but not the same as the argument. Well, actually, we're proposing this as a zoonosis. There are very, very, very few zoonoses where we have different reactions and different diseases in different animals. So, there's no predictable outcome from Crohn's, and there's no predictable outcome from JD. 
Why should they not be exactly the same? This isn't an argument, in my opinion. There is a correlation between map infection and animal workers. In fact, this correlation actually shows that frequent challenge actually may improve the immune recognition, and farmers may be protected if they are actually given a large dosis. The CMI response to MAP antigens is not demonstrated in Crohn's patients. Fine, that's okay. I don't mind that. I'll just show you. MAP turns down this response. This fits very, very, very well with our model. However, if we actually look carefully, we see that this is not the normal TH1 response, but is in fact the TH17 response that we should be looking for. Immune therapy doesn't worsen Crohn's disease like TB does. Well, this is because MAP can't grow with immune therapy. It is released, probably, from its, from its macrophage um, uh, immune re recognition, but it doesn't grow. So therefore, it doesn't make it worse. And this leaves us with just one, this argument here. So anti map drugs in one study, just the one study, didn't decrease Crohn's disease relapse rate after two years. Okay, so this is the one study. I can't quote any more because there's only been one study. This is the only one. This is a double-blind placebo trial. This is the only one you can quote. Unfortunately, this is also the only one that was badly designed. Any start sample, any design of test that is supposedly designed an anti-MAP drugs against patients of, who theoretically have MAP and doesn't bother to test to see if they had MAP in the first place, in my opinion, is not asking the right question. However, if you look at what uh, Vivek Kapoor and uh, Marcel Bert extracted this data again and had a good look at it, and you can actually see that in the short term, this study actually did say that in fact, if you give anti therapy, you actually can make the patients better. Here are two good examples of it happening. Since before and after positive, MAP positive, they go MAP negative. Before, after, good treatment, MAP positive. MAP negative. So the anti-MAP treatment actually does work if you put it into the right patient at the right time. And it does get rid of MAP and you are cured. So this brings me to the argument for tonight. I think everybody should now bite the bullet. I think you should change your minds. And I think you should put it in writing. Because we're never going to persuade the clinicians otherwise. I think you should never write again this phrase there is an association with power tuberculosis. I don't think this is, again, acceptable. But I think the, the data tonight show, and I've shown you, that MAP can, and it does infect Crohn's disease, and persist. When it does, it responds to anti-MAP therapy. MAP can and does exploit those susceptibility genes to promote chronic persistent, and MAP can and does generate a TH. 17 biased immune dysregulation that could lead to Crohn's disease. So now if we accept that this occurs in even one patient, just the one patient is enough, then we can persuade the clinicians to do robust and decent studies to find out how many and who of these samples, these patients, have MAP and which ones actually are causing Crohn's disease. So I urge you to accept the scientific data to take the verdict that I think is beyond reasonable doubt. Right, please. Viable Crohn's, chronic MAP infection is present in most of the patients with Crohn's disease, and MAP infection can cause the immune dysregulation that is the major predisposing factor to the development of Crohn's disease. So that just remains to say thank you to all my contributors for this evening, and especially to you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed.